so. I don't like how my hair is. What should I do for my hair? Jess, I need help. What do you need help with? I would try my best, but I'm also an idiot, so. Where'd you get your top? From the thrift shop. <laughs> what palette did you use in your recent makeup tutorial? It's a Morphe palette? The, oh, 35M. Yeah. That is... That is the palette. I need to buy new lashes. These lashes are falling apart. I don't know what to do with my hair. Should I do space buns? Should I do space buns? Hi, girl. Hope you're okay. I am okay. Um, I just got put on. I just went on, I just got put on Wellbutrin, so, uh, wish me luck. It is an, it's an antidepressant that's not an SSRI, so, um, that's good, because SSRIs don't seem to be working for me. What lipstick was on your last tutorial? It was so pretty. It is Spice by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Where was the place in Richmond you got waxed at? Um... Also, what song is... I th think this song is... I don't remember. Um, you missed my dilemma. Scroll up. I like this boy a lot. My pride won't let me text him. LMAO, it's been three days. Um, okay. Here is the thing, okay? The tea. Here's the motherfucking tea. Um... Your time's valuable. Like, if someone doesn't respect that you don't have all the time in the world, and, like, they don't respect that, and they don't fucking talk to you, then they're not worth your time. Like, the effort you put in should be matched. If you put a lot of effort into this dude, and this dude doesn't match that energy, then he's not worth it. And I know you're thinking, oh, well, like, this dude's, like, amazing. Like, there's no other guy like that. Bitch, the oceans may be dying, but men unfortunately are not, and there are plenty of men in this sea. So, um, my advice to you is to take a step back, chill, don't, um, don't put so much time into someone who's not putting the same amount of time into you. And I know it's easier said than done. But there's a lot of things you can do to distract yourself, and it's better to just distract yourself than just, like, stay hung up on that. Try pigtails and some hat Also, what lash? Oh, my God, I remember. I used to do hair like this. Like, it was very... Okay, I'm going to do that. I had to go look under my bed for hair ties. Alright. Can you please save this live? The oceans may be dime. <laughs> Men are virtual, too sure. Um. Girl, I had a deep crush on a guy and cried for two days and I asked him to fuck me because that's all I could offer, ladies. Okay, yeah, um, you are worth so much and you need to know that you're worth that much so you know how to respond to people who don't treat you like you're worth that much. If, if you don't know how much you're worth, then like someone can treat you like shit and you think that's okay. You can't think that's okay. So, don't give him your time of day, my dear. Did, did you fuck him? About to do a makeup look inspired by yours. Any recommendations? Well, I really like doing warm makeup. But do you like boba? I don't think you can ask an Asian person that and expect to know. So, um, yes, I do like boba. This is like my old playlist, like, 
all the songs on here my ex showed me. So I think I made it. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. I don't like that this isn't black. I thought this was black. Alright, I gotta find a black hair tie. I'm literally like out of hair ties. So. Lashes. They're the Miami lashes from Lily Lash, but I gotta get new ones. I don't have another freaking black hair tie. What is this? So I had a moment and texted my ex, what should I do? Um, understand that sometimes you're weak. Sometimes you're gonna miss your old boo, but... You don't move on from that. Do you not want him in your life? Is he not in your life for a reason? So, do you hear BTS's new song yet? No, I do not listen to BTS. The only the only like K-pop group I listen to is Twice occasionally because my friend showed me it. So, I'm not a BTS stan. Sorry, please don't unfollow me because of that. There she goes. How is that? I feel so ugly right now. Like, I don't know why. I just feel so ugly. <laughs> mm. I hiccup and... I just hiccup and threw it up in my mouth. Oh my god, I just threw up on my... <sighs> god. Are you okay? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know, my stomach's been weird. I'm so sorry. I almost threw up, like, actually on camera, but then I realized, ha, ah, I'm on camera. So I hit up on the other think. 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 I'm afraid of throw up, so <laughs> sorry. Don't ruin the lipstick. I'll try. Oh, remember this shit? Um, queen of consideration. Do you like K-pop in general? Not really, but. Um, I'm trying to warm up to it because, like, that's my culture. I should love it. It's just, like, I grew I grew up listening to a lot of K-pop. A lot of K-pop. Like, 21, Girls' Generation, shit like that. And, um, just, I like, got made fun of a lot, so I got very Americanized. Um, what to do when someone has cut you out and no longer answers, but you still want to make an effort? Honestly, say like one last thing, one last thought, don't make it too long, and then drop out. Just fall back. Can we be friends? We are friends. Um, I used to love Girls' Generation as a kid, though. Yeah. Who didn't? Who? What Asian girl didn't love Girls' Generation as a kid? What's your culture stand beat as more than Asian fans? Honestly, I, I get I I believe it. Do it every day. I might just pull up on your bay. Ooh, I'm so icy. Fun fact. My ex blocked this guy. We are friends. And then he was like, yeet. He blocked him for me, and I just haven't unblocked him out of respect, I guess, but, 
How often do you speak Korean? Every day, most of the day, actually. My um, dad and stepmom are Korean, and they're who I live with, so I speak Korean a lot. How to deal with friend breakups? Um, crackhead. Thank you. Um, just like have you just have to realize that people inevitably come and go out of your life. And if they're not in it, then it just means that you guys are meant to go different ways. You just are meant to follow different paths, and it's gonna hurt. And just let yourself feel the pain. Don't hold back pain because it'll just sink into your chest, and you'll just hold on to that forever. So just let out your pain. Let out how betrayed you feel if you feel betrayed. I don't know if you feel betrayed. Um, opinions on soul ties. Uh, absolutely true. Soulmates are real because Ethan, my best friend, is my absolute soulmate. I never had to doubt that in my life. I love him so much. Yeah, cry out the pain and understand that, like, life has a lot to offer you. And I know I'm a funny person to say that. But, like, you're so young. And... These things that happen when you're young are to prepare you for stuff when you're older, you know? Like, if, you, if you're if you not friends with this person, there's a reason why you're not friends. And that's okay. Just, like, appreciate what they were to you, what they did for you, and how you grew with them. And now it's time to grow with someone else or just grow on your own. I don't like my hair. I feel so ugly right now. I, I like, I kind of want to just take everything off. Like, ugh. You're so pretty. Thank you. Did I really read that? I feel like you're the one of the most relatable and real people I've seen. Thank you. When are you getting a new tattoo? When I move out and I'm an adult because my dad doesn't like tattoos and he doesn't like that I get them under his roof and I respect that. So when I'm making my own money and supporting myself as an adult, then I'll get more tattoos. But I'm going to get one right here. Um... Do you have more guy friends or female friends? I think... I think I have more guy friends, like, that I'm close with. Um, friend breakups are weird, yeah. They're, they're weird. Friend breakups are hard. They're really hard. You just gotta let it out, you know? Like, I had a friend breakup recently. Not recently. Back in October, the one I talked about. And it's hard because a lot of things remind me of our friendship and remind me of her. And I miss her so much. And I miss our friendship. But I just accepted that, like, I had to let it go. What do you think of Black Bear's music? I don't really like it. It's just so different from his, like, the rest of his vibe. But it's also Black Bear, so I'm just going to learn to like it because I'll support him through everything. Besides the fact that he's a cheater. Fuck that. But, you know. That's my, I stand, I stand black bear. So, play Anita, I don't know what that is. Khalid's new music, I haven't listened to it, but I do really like Saturday Nights. And I don't even know if that's new or if I'm just like, not hip, but. I just had a friend breakup yesterday, lol, I'm so happy, uh. And some, some friend breakups are good. It's from Brazil. I might listen to it when I get off. I just can't control my music because I'm on live and it's playing on my phone, so it connects my speakers. I just do it and I love it a lot, but yeah, it's really different. I like I like it more in Cyber Sex. Cyber Sex was great, but also kind of trash. Um, my favorite albums after Glow and uh, Do you listen to B the Booby? I follow her. I love her. I haven't really listened to her music. I don't know why. I probably should go listen. To music, but um, 
Yeah. I looked, I feel like I look so boring without freckles. But, I can't have them all the time. I feel like I should have clips in my hair. Should I, should I pop on some earrings? eat please I have been eating I just like lost my appetite for a while um and it just hasn't come back but how many tattoos do you have I only have two but this one's kind of big um I probably shouldn't have gotten it this like big because now I can't put I can't really put anything else here I mean if I wanted I could put something like here I think that would look nice because I decided I decided that like I'm gonna put more stuff on the bottom here and then stuff on here and then that'll be you know I have 12 that's crazy you know what's crazy though like when I hear 12 I think that's a lot but it's usually like smaller ones around any other advice any other advice you think is important on friend breakups thank you um, first of all, I think that when you love someone once, you love them forever. And if you were friends and you were close enough to have a breakup and, like, be in pain. Because, you know, there's friend breakups where it's just you kind of fall apart, you grow distant. And, you know, those are hard too, but usually it just means that, like, you guys weren't as close or the, um, friendship was kind of, like, fading at its own pace. But when it's friend breakups, you know, they're pretty abrupt. But, like, understand that you, you should still feel good for them. You should still be happy for them and think positively for them. And just hope that they go, that they have a great life, that they are successful, that they, are, they achieve what they want to achieve, you know? Because that's really important to, like, not try to make yourself hate someone you love. Because you don't have to make, you like, hurt. you don't have to hate someone you love. You know, you can still love someone even after you guys have grown distant. And just, like, keep your thoughts as positive as possible. I don't know the context of why you guys aren't friends anymore, but, you know, I think they're... Uh, my eyeliner, like, doesn't match. Okay, I just fucked that up. All right, that sucks. Um, I've been friends with fake people for three or five years, and all they did was embarrass me and make me feel like shit. People come and go. Exactly, like, sometimes certain people are in your life to teach you certain things, and that doesn't mean that they're, like, someone you need in your life forever, you know? Uh, Virginia, Colorado. I for real wish I stayed in VA because Colorado is whack. Dude, I feel that. I don't really vibe with Colorado. It's so different from back home, but I'm trying to embrace it. GPA? I don't, I don't know. Anita Vaitepagar. I really hope I didn't just say something bad, but I will listen to that song with Snoop Dogg. He made that clear, so... And between I hate you when it's... Uh, what are you using for your inner corner highlight? I'm using this. This. From the Huda Gemstones palette. And it's this. Anita is bisexual. I don't know if that's, like, what the word means or... The artist, if it's an artist, I'm also bisexual. How old are you? I'm 18 years old. January 1st, 2001. People think that like, oh, like 2000s babies are so young. 
So when I see 2001, I'm like, I can't believe I'm not 12. Um, are you an introvert or extrovert? I'm super, super extroverted. Like, if you guys ever run into me in person, I'd be like jumping on you. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> I love people. Um, I'm about to do full makeup for five days. Any tips for keeping your skin super nice? Use an oil cleanser. Just like, you gotta just really, really oil cleanse and make sure all your pores are clean. The most important part about makeup is how you take it off. And yeah, primers are great and you should definitely use a primer, but um, you gotta take it off. Just just double cleanse, just use a, a oil cleanser. I really like the It Cosmetics one. I think Trader Joe's has one. It's really just any oil. It's just some oils like wash off easier because like if you use like back into the fisting when you had social anxiety i had such bad social anxiety and now i'm like doing so well so i'm proud of myself too but um yeah use like an oil cleanser and then use like a deep cleansing soap afterwards and then moisturize just make sure your skin's super clean like oil cleanser regular cleanser toner moisturizer and whatever else you need and just make sure you just take care of stuff in between makeup yeah don't sleep in your makeup if you know you're gonna do makeup again carla is, uh, that's not english so i don't know what that says but thank you advice for social anxiety um well how many friends do you have in your f close friend group I don't really have a friend group per se because a lot of like good friends I have like aren't friends with each other but I guess I have a friend group of like um on my like there's an interlap of like my Bethesda friends my Richmond friends so I guess it'd be those like Gabe Ethan and Hannah and Jack and Jake and Robbie that's like we would hang out together a lot and I'm, I miss them so much no I don't have any friends actually I'm best friends with Joey my neighbor and it's so great because he lives like right next door so we hang out all the time any gay guy friends I know every girl has them you know, interesting enough, all of, like, my gay best GBFs, I'm not, like, really close with them anymore. Um, Carla and Becca are having conversation of their own in Brazilian Portuguese. Ah! Nice. <sighs> Why are you so pretty? Have you tried CBD oil for depression anxiety? If yes, would you recommend it? I have tried CBD stuff. Personally, I can't really like notice a difference. I don't really think it works that much. So, um, I don't know. It's each to each their own. But I also think like, are you still vegan? Ah, I remember those days. I'm not vegan anymore. I found out how like fucked up the like farming industry is too. And I just realized like, even though like the animal industry like is very harmful to, to the um, animals, like the farming industry is really, really harmful to people. And it's like, I like meat and I like eating the way I eat. And like, I'd rather just eat a little bit of both, but I try to avoid meat. I don't eat that much, but like just knowing that like by being full vegan isn't exactly cruelty free and it's not like, great for the people who are in agriculture like I just didn't personally I just didn't think I would want to give up a lot of what I like um exactly a lot of vegans only seem to care about the harm to the animals but not harm to the laborers I feel like the agriculture industry is a lot harder on people than the animal industry is but I know it, it, the animal industry is really really difficult on the environment so it's kind of like I know the foods I like, so I'd rather have a balance of them and try to eat more vegetables and eat less meat, but understand, like, uh, a lot of things that I do can't directly, like, affect the people. So, I don't know, trying to be conscious, but, like, live by my 
things I enjoy. Um, I loved your recent video about mental health. I'm glad. It actually made sense. Thank you. Like, I, I just realized I was in the hospital recently. Um, I won't go into the details of my health problems, but I had a problem with my heart. And I, it was, like, really scary. Um, being aware of this stuff is the best thing you can do. I'm so proud of you, Jess. I, it's like, I guess I don't try to openly advocate for anything because I want to think, you know... Being aware and spreading awareness is one thing, but, like, I'd want to do, like, a direct impact on it. So, at a certain point, like, I, I know I could get to a certain point where I could be, like, powerful enough to, like, make an impact, maybe. So, I want to, like, keep my, like, beliefs on, like, the down low, not, like, super advocate until I'm, like, in a place where I feel like I can do it and, like, kick ass from the inside, like, infiltrate the fucking industry. <laughs> And I know there's, like, there's meat that you can buy humanely raised meat at certain grocery stores and markets. That is true. Um, much love from Japan. Uh, I can't hear what you're saying, but I love you. I love you, too! I stand, Gabriel. Okay, um, what was I saying? I don't remember. I did my makeup too early. Like, I really could have waited because I don't have to see anyone for a while, but I still did this. Um, is your heart okay? It is now. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky enough that where I am live, I'm able to have my own garden so I can grow many of my own veggies at home. That's so nice. I have flowers in my garden. I don't know if the climate here is, like, equipped for vegetables. How's your mom? My mom's good. Thoughts on the law of attraction? I definitely think the law of attraction is true in some ways. There's been a study that, like, sometimes it can have a reverse effect that if you... Huh? Oh, no. Um, chinku. Like, nine o'clock. Uh, chinku malia pa. And then, um, we're gonna go to Joey's. He's at his house. Probably. Mm. Are you moving here to LA? When are you moving here to LA? Um, probably in like September. It's just I don't have anyone to move with now because I had people to move with and then they were like, oh, I can't. And I was like, no. Sometimes I forget you're bilingual. I'm barely bilingual. I, you know, I grew up speaking Korean perfectly, a little bit of Japanese, and it just. I forgot all of it. The makeup look you were wearing like two days ago or something that was smoky out. That was pretty on you. Thank you. I love myself, but I have body issues. I like my heart and how I look. I like my heart and how I look, but I hate being thick even though it's the standard. <coughs> That's like the thing. Like, you can do two things about body issue problems. If you don't like how you look and you don't think you can change it or you've tried to change it and it's not you know, working out, like, how you wanted it to, you could just accept it. You could try and try and force yourself to, like, be loving of how you look and just appreciate every way that you are. Or you could try to actively change it, try to actively change your diet, actively change your workout routine. And those are really the only things you can do. So, can you go back to the lot of love attraction? Oh, so there was a study that people who visualize their success often like um end up not working as hard for it because once you like visualize your success and you can imagine how it is to be a certain way it it like lights up the parts of your brain that makes it feel like you've already achieved it like you've experienced it and that usually that can have the reverse reverse effect of like knocking your motivation down which is what i've read but um 
But I think that the law of attraction is definitely real, but you also have to take in mind, like, here's how I like to put it. Two people, one person is very optimistic and one person is very pessimistic, could live the same exact day, and then the optimistic person could say that day was a really good day, and the pessimistic person could say it was a terrible day. And the, th so the same things could happen, but it's what you focus on. A pessimistic person might notice the traffic they were in, and the optimistic person might just, like, accept that the traffic happens, and he's like, oh, well, you know, this is, this is, this is how it is. And the optimistic person might, like, notice that they got a parking spot, and the pessimistic person totally ignores the fact that it happened. When you live a certain life and have a certain mentality, you only notice certain things about your life. Because, like, yes, you take everything in, but whatever you're, like, thinking about is what, like, kind of sticks in your head about the day. Yeah, visualizing, um, visual, visualizing setting a test is better than visualizing getting an A. See? Yeah. So, you have to, like, think, I think it's, like, the law of attraction won't work if you're not optimistic about a lot of aspects of life, because you're gonna pick out what you notice, you're gonna pick out, um, You're going to pick out the things that you want to see. And if you're an optimistic person, you'll pick out the things that were happy, the things that you felt good about. Like, um, like you're going to be tr drawn to this, the same energies you put out. And if you put out energy that, like, makes you think that, oh, I, like, love this and this and this happened, you're going to notice those things. So I think it's more of a combination of training your mind not to just think about, like, the law of attraction per se, because that kind of just, like, narrows down what exactly you're doing in your head. I think it's, like, a whole revitalization of your psyche, of your mentality, what you notice about the day, what you focus on, because, like, I consider myself a very lucky person. I think that I meet really great people and that, like, things work out for me. And I know I could look at it a different way because, like, I've dealt with a lot of trauma. I've had a lot of sexual assault problems. Like, I could focus on that. I could focus on the fact that I met these people who hurt me. And I could focus on the fact that, like, the hurt that I experienced hurt for a really long time, that I'm still not over it, you know? But I also have met wonderful people. I've met, like, amazing people who have changed my life and who are so fun to be around. And it's, like you're gonna meet different types of people it's like what are you focusing on like who are you more who are you putting more value on like what are you putting more value on in your life and i think to like make the law of attraction and to make things work out for you and be positive you have to focus on the things that you're proud of the things that you're happy about and the things you're grateful for and you'll just focus a lot of like good energy on good things and that's a good way to live Astral opinion on astrology and Capricorns. I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn Virgo rising and Aries moon. I don't think that they're that accurate. I think they're kind of just fun. Um, I do think that like it makes sense why like gravity and like astrology and the stars and how the planets are aligned could impact you, but I don't think that it impacts people as much as they think when it comes to astrology. Um, like, there's, I've met people who are like, oh, like, I can't help cheating, like, I keep cheating on my boyfriend, but, like, I'm a Scorpio, and that's, that's not an excuse. I feel like there are things, like, if the universe was a certain way, the day you were born could impact, like, certain, you know, things you want to do, and at the same time, it also makes sense because, like, maybe, like, Zodiacs, like, trying to use Zodiacs, um like there are people in your like the lunar calendar year that you grow up around like i see how those like could have similar traits because you guys are born in the same year you go to school with these people like there's things that your generation is going to have in common so you need to give a ted talk one day um thank you i i want to i really want to give a ted talk one day but i'm like i don't think i'm as successful as i want to be you know, and I think there's a lot more I can do and a lot more growing I can do. And I'm really focusing on growing. Would you ever consider being a psychologist? Actually, yes. I do want to go to college later. I don't want to do it now because I just feel like um, there's nothing really to benefit me about going to college now. But I want to go um, 
later in life so I can be a talk therapist or a like a licensed psychologist or a life coach later on in life because I really like helping people and I really like talking about things. I wish I knew more about astrology so I could see how accurate it really is. Get co-star. That's like how I feel too. Like I feel like I don't know enough about it to make it accurate, but I also feel like there's so many things that impact your individual personality and your individual like biases and like um like umbrella terms just seem, you know, like a comfort thing. What is your favorite Netflix series? I really liked you. Um, Davis and I, like, binged it. I can only see you as, as a psychologist. Your personality is so warm and you give such great advice. Thank you. I always wanted to be a therapist, but I definitely would have a hard time not taking on people's problems because I'm such an empath. I get that. Personally, I can kind of turn off my empathy and sympathy. And, like, it doesn't really, like, I'm empathetic for people. I want to help people. But, like, it doesn't hurt me personally as much so i think um it gives me anxiety because most of my friends know what to do after high school and i'm here all confused and all that here's the thing no one actually knows what they want to do after high school that's a lie it's like you know what you think you should do after high school and people like so put like education and career stuff on a pedestal but your life is not just what you do to make money you know you can be a waitress in like new york and make a lot of money and it's just you know you're waiting tables but like are you enjoying what you're doing like if you don't know enough about yourself and what you like to do like you don't have to worry about that. You can take a year off. You don't have to fucking freak out. Because, you know, you spend a lot of these formative years of your life in a structured educational system that teaches you how to be smart in a certain way. But there's things like emotional intelligence and, like, spiritual intelligence. And there's just a lot you can do for yourself that you don't learn in school. And that doesn't mean that you're less successful or, like, more lost than anyone else. You can just focus on a different aspect of your life. I have the same problem going on. I'm in my final year of high school and I don't know what to do with my future. I feel like I'm not passionate about anything at all. Here's the thing about passion. It's a myth. You don't have to be passionate about something to be successful in what you do and like what you do and like the life you have. Because, like, you know, your career at the end of the day could just be a job. You don't have to have a career. You could just have a job if um, that's what you need at the moment. You know, like... We spend so much time being taught how to be like everyone else. It's really hard to find ourselves. And the years after high school are very important for brain development and personality development. And there's like things like if you really, really, really love soccer, it doesn't mean you have to be a soccer player. It means you could play soccer on the side. But if an aspect you like about soccer is teamwork and like how it feels to accomplish something that you did as a team, you know, you could find a job that incorporates that aspect of um, your passion. Like, people think passion is an actual action, like an actual course of life you have to take. But you can be passionate about helping people, and you can be passionate about, like, finding yourself and growing spiritually. And you can, like, tunnel that into something you can do to make money. I have so much pressure for my family to go to college because my family is struggling money-wise. Was there more context to that? Uh, what are your favorite characters? Um, yeah, most ethnic households force their kids to go to college so bad. See, I was never really forced into doing college. But, um, I see how that is. And, you know, you can, you can do, like, um an unde undeclared major for college and just kind of like feel it out a lot of the college experience is really just like the social aspect meeting people um you learn a lot in college that you don't learn from your professors so like don't think you have to lock in to a major I would, re if you don't know what you're doing with college, I would highly recommend being an undeclared major for the first year and like taking different classes that interest you and then changing your major in the second year or second semester or whatever. Every time I go through stop a, a depressive episode, I clean my, I stop cleaning my room and I was wondering what you, if you do with that or have any advice. Yeah, there's like liberal arts colleges too. You know, there's a lot. You, there's a lot. 
you know, a lot of us get stuck thinking there's only one way to do something, and that's just because we were only taught one way to do something. But if you're really dedicated to your future, and I know you are, you have to do research on your own part. You know, we're not given the resources to know how to be other than the norm. We're just, like, kind of thrown one thing and, like, hey, this is what you got. But it's not what you got, you know? You have to do a lot for yourself, which is the fucked up thing about our education system is that if you don't have the initiative to do it for yourself, you end up lost. So don't let yourself end up lost because, like, yes, researching, yes, stressing out about stuff like this hurts and it's uncomfortable, but don't try to, like, push it down and don't try to distract yourself. Don't get, like, shit-faced drunk with your friends because you don't know what you're doing with your life. Take this time to be uncomfortable and, like, try and find things. Research like hell. Go to the library. Read a lot of books. Like, read a lot of, like, personal stories. Listen to TED Talks. There are so many ways to live your life. And, you know, the only the only problem is you don't know one. So, find one, you know? You're not, you're not helpless. Um, the, the thing about not cleaning, yeah, I'm like that too. My room is a fucking mess when I get depressed. Um, I really want to go to college, but I want to move back to my parents' house. And they're so abusive and I hate the pressure. Uh, um, that's like one thing. You can use college to escape from your parents. Um, but if you don't want to go into student, like, loans and, like, have a lot of debt, like, if you like art and you want to major in art, don't, you don't need college because you can take a course and get a certificate, but do your job, so don't stress. That's true. Um, one time I was in a rough patch, you couldn't even see the floor, I had to clean for weeks, but then again, my messy room stressed me out too. Yeah, so, like, when my, my room is messy, I understand that, like, I don't feel like cleaning because I don't have the emotional effort and energy to, like, I, you know, when you're, when you're suicidal as fuck, and I've been suicidal every day of my life since I was 12 until recently, like, recently, I just stopped considering death as an option, um, you know, you spend a lot of emotional energy trying to push that down, trying to push down the thoughts, trying to, like, keep yourself stable, and I get that, like, I've, I have become, kinder to myself and understanding that like certain times like I won't be able to clean and I'll just hold off and try and get the energy to clean because when I do clean I clean all at once and it's spotless you know um other things you could do is if one particular table bothers you just focus on that table for a day and focus on little parts so that you know you know when you're depressed um, you fucking lay in your bed for hours. So, when you're laying in your bed for hours and you're, like, staring at how fucked up your makeup is, just get up, set a timer for, like, 30 minutes, work only on that area, and then once you're done, lay back down. And, you know, you gotta do stuff like that. Self-discipline, like, having a passion for a clean room doesn't, um... I kinda wanna be emotionally intelligent without being a Christian. I pray to God, but other than that, I definitely don't wanna practice the religion. And, you know, you're allowed to do that, too. There's no one way to practice a religion. There's no one way to practice spirituality. You can... Uh, how do you feel comfortable alone when you and your friends don't take the initiative to hang out? I want to learn how to not feel so lonely and dependent on other people. I can't personally say that... Um, are you Korean? Yes, I am. I also struggle with that problem, and I always find people to comfort me and hang out with, so... I'm not at a point where I can comfortably give you advice on that because I haven't figured it out for myself. So, I'm sorry. Um, I started taking birth control. I've been extremely depressed. Oh, my God. That is what happened to me. When I got on hormonal birth control, it fucked me over. Like, life just fucked me in the ass. It's horrible. But, um, I got a copper IUD. The problem is I've had my period three months and three times in one month. So that sucked, but I don't have any of the depression. So, um, you know, you could you could try a copper IUD. If it's if it's making you depressed, um, wait three months. That's what I did. And if it doesn't get better after three months, like take it out, like stop taking it. Um, talk to your gynecologist or or physician, whoever you're um getting it from, and. I would try the copper IUD. That's been working for me. Your talk actually helped me. Thanks, Jess. 
I am so glad. Are you still on the hopper, copper IUD? Yeah, it lasts 10 years. I just put it in in February, so I've had it for over a month now. The creeps in the comments have to go. Yeah, I'm literally talking about spirituality and self-growth, and they're like, you're so naughty. <laughs> um, I have an explan on. I've had no period for months, but I get cramps. So, uh, But I get no cramps. Yeah, my friend has an expo on, and she's had her period nonstop. My other friend had an expo on, and she's, like, fine. It's really about your body, and that's, like, the hard thing. It's the scary thing about birth control. And it's why I just decided to not bother with hormonal birth control, because, yeah, I might find a hormonal birth control that doesn't make me depressed, but I'd rather just stick to the copper and not have to deal with hormones. Um, and it's, like, 99.9% .9 effective. It was really painful to put in. Like, the insertion, I was, like, fucking shaking. It hurt so bad. But, um... Do you remember when you tried to make fries and oil instead of the fire alarm at home? Yes! It was like 3 a.m. Oh, God, I was fucking... Whew, that was awful, but hilarious. Um, I've had the Marina IUD, and I bled for six months, then never again. I really hope I don't bleed for six months. That would suck. But... Um... <sighs> That's so scary. I wonder the next one on my period was so horrible before I'm deaf scared. I'll get really sick if I change birth control. The next one on does help with your period. The IUD makes periods worse for the first couple months. But, um, like after that, I think it's fine. I never really had a problem with my period. So for me, I'm okay with that, and I'm okay, I'd rather have a lot of physical pain than emotional pain, because, like, for me, emotional pain is so much worse and so much harder to get over, so that's why I got, I'm too scared of birth control if it really goes when I don't get my period and I don't want to switch it up on me. That's fair, you know, you don't have to be on birth control, just be, just be safe. Are you an independent person or codependent? I'm both, um... I got a Nuva ring today and I'm terrified of the side effects. Oof. OMG, pros Prozac me messes up your emotional pain so much. Jesus. Yeah, I got off Prozac. It was killing me. Um, I haven't had my period in seven months that I'm not pregnant. That's good. You know, if you don't want to get on birth control, understand that you have to take other precautions to not get pregnant. Like, keep pregnancy tests on you. Um, get some, like... I recommend, if you don't want to get birth control, get some Plan B ahead. Just, like, buy some ahead. You can get them, like, on Amazon for a lot less than you do in store. That way you have it on hand. Um, just, like, keep that around. Use protection, of course. You know, like, be safe. What brow product do you use? I use this, but I don't really love it, so I'm trying to... What are your favorite type of milkshake? Strawberry or mint chip? Do you still have a therapist? I have one now and I don't like it because it's a church thing and that won't help with my cutting. Okay, um, I just got a new therapist. I've been as different experience. Prozac has been the only medication that helps me at all. Exactly, everyone's body is different. Um, you know, if if you're if you're not gaining anything from therapy, just find a different therapist. Uh, there's online therapy too if you don't want your parents to know if you're stressed about your parents reactions to it there's um, like better help and a lot of like online resources I also have an expert on birth control what do you recommend for brows like a cheap one um I love the LA girl and the brow stylist definer these are my two favorite brow pencils where do you find a therapist, like an actual place? You have to look up any therapist in your area. Like, look up therapists near me that take blank your insurance if you have it. And then you just have to call around. What are the online therapy called? I know of one called BetterHelp. I haven't tried it. They once reached out to me, but I never got back to them. So I should probably should get back to them. Um, but you could literally Google online therapy. There are a lot of therapists that do... Um, texting or calling therapy and then you don't have to go to a physical location and um you know you could you could hide it from your parents if you're making your own money from like a part-time job or something uh you could probably better help has a bad reputation it does i did not know that 
Um, random question, but do you think it's possible to wear false teeth if I wear glasses daily? Uh, personally, I always have contacts in when I wear falsies, but I, I don't, it's... Oh, BetterHelp doesn't use licensed therapists. In that case, look for licensed therapists that do online therapy, because there's a lot. Um, there's just a lot of resources you can find for yourself, and a lot of, like, solutions to problems, if you look. I did not know about that BetterHelp reputation, so I guess I won't hit them back. They don't deal with extreme cases or something like that. And that's understandable, you know, you can't really blame the corporation, like, they have to protect themselves, too. And a lot of, like... They didn't accept people. Oh, I did not know all of that. Wow, T, what's your type? Do you mean like physically? Like what I'm attracted to? Yeah, know the difference between therapist, psychologist, and psych psychiatrist. So a psychiatrist will prescribe you medication. You don't get talk therapy from them. Um, I first recommend like if you, if you, um, A psychologist is someone who will practice therapy with you and prescribe you medication. I'm, I think. Don't quote me on that. And a therapist will just do speech therapy with you. I recommend first trying out a speech therapist, talking to a therapist about your problems. And, um, yeah, they have counselors. I mean, it's not free. It's part of your tuition. But, uh, yeah, there's that. Um... I would recommend going to a speech therapist first, talking it out, try and, like, get to, from them, like, what they think you should do. And, like, if you don't want to pay for a psychiatrist, which you don't necessarily have to, you could, um, go to your primary care doctor, primary care physician, and tell them what you're dealing with. A lot of them will prescribe, um, really common, uh, antidepressants like Prozac and Zoloft. They're very common. Yeah, psychologists can diagnose and not prescribe. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that's what I would recommend doing. Because if you're... Uh, Zoloft was bad for me too. But everyone's different. And um, SSRIs are the most common type of... <sighs> antidepressant. They're selective serotonin inhibitor... Inhibi inhibi whatever um and most doctors if you have depression at least depression or ptsd will prescribe a ssri um there's also stuff like wellbutrin which uh deals with another part not just their serotonin and then there's stuff like tobamax or Lev levian or whatever um that are good for mood swings and stuff uh, yeah, you have to try new things, um, and if you don't want to get a psychiatrist, just talk to your physician. Uh, that's if you have, like, minor problems, not, like, minor per se, but more, like, basic ones. Like, if you have, if you're seeing things, if you're hearing things, if you're having auditory, visual hallucinations, um, then definitely talk to a psychiatrist but if you're someone who has an anxiety disorder or depression a lot of your a lot of that can be dealt with at your physician and um might be more covered by insu your insurance because not all insurance covers uh mental stuff i think i'm not sure depends on your stuff are you a virgin if not how was your first time any advice oof i don't know if i can get really into that um Oh, I'm just saying, legit, I had to get off it soon, even though you could, yeah. Zoloft and Prozac weren't horrible. Zoloft had some bad shit happen to me that was really bad, that did not, like, Zoloft worked at first, and then it got worse, um, but Prozac didn't really work. I tried seeing two different psychiatrists, but I didn't feel comfortable with them. It's really, yeah, it's... Your therapy and your medication will only work as much as you're comfortable with your doctor. So you have to see a lot of people, which is a pain in the ass. But, you know, your mental health should come first. If you don't do it now, then you have to, like, do it later. And, like, eventually you have to. And it's a lot easier to catch problems when you're young. 
Uh, I don't want to waste my time explaining myself again. Um, you know, here's the thing, though. It's not a waste of time, because if you don't deal with it now, it'll just get worse, and you'll have to deal with it when you're, like, 20, 30, and it hurts a lot more when you have to go with, with, deal with it then. You have to... It's uncomfortable finding a doctor that works for you, and it's not the best feeling to feel like you're not being heard and stuff, but it's something you have to go through because that's just how it is. And, you know, the more you do it, the more you can just start stating things as facts. I recommend maybe putting a note of, like, all the things that you want to touch on, and when you go to a new therapist and do an intake uh, appointment, Go over all of it. Because then it'll feel less like you're re-explaining yourself. It's kind of like... Putting a lot. Putting... Just going through the motion of, like, listing problems. That could be helpful, but it really depends. But I just think that... You know, you might think that life is really difficult right now. But, um, you have more time when you're younger than when you're older. I just try to make the best of it. And you could do that too, you know? Like, you don't have to like the person. You could just ask, like, actual, like, like, really clinical questions and then come home and work on it on your own. Because therapy is only going to be as good as it is when you work on yourself. You have to do a lot for yourself. So... <sighs> The person who will fight this battle for you, who will win it for you, is yourself. And that's really... These other people are just giving you tools. Therapists don't solve your problems for you. They give you tools to solve your own problems. That's really how it is. And, like... If you don't want to do something now, but you know you want to do it, and you do it later, you're still going to spend the same amount of time later. It just might be a little more inconvenient at that point. So I'd rather personally deal with it as soon as possible so that could be your case or you could wait it's really up to you what you think you need and just a lot of things are introspective and you should have a more conscious handle on your emotions on your feelings regulate yourself like take a step back every time you feel overwhelmed and think why you're overwhelmed what caused the overwhelming feeling you got to do that a lot of it's hard work because it's so hard to do anything when you're depressed and harder when, like, you have to do actual steps like that. I have a job interview for a career next week. Any advice? Dress like you got the job, and that's really common advice, but um, ask a lot of questions. Ask so many questions. Not, like, so many. Ask as many questions as it as it comes across that you want this job, you know? Like... A lot of people go into jobs not expecting it, go into it expecting it, ask questions like you already got it, like, oh, what are your hours, like, how, what's the, like, like, environment like, a lot of times they'll ask you at the end, do you have any questions for us, and most of the times people just say no, but that's a, that's a time where you can really show yourself, when you're asking questions, you're, like, really putting across how much you want the job, and that's great, because employers really like to know that the person that they're interviewing wants it i'm hesitant to go to therapy because i feel like saying by saying everything in my head that's out loud admitting to the fact that something's wrong with me sometimes you have to admit that you have a problem to fix it because if you don't admit you have a problem then you can't fix it and you're gonna have to hurt first and that's the unfortunate truth you have to pour a lot out before you can start putting more stuff back in you you have to hurt before you heal and it's not it's not wrong to admit you have a problem and it's not wrong to admit like you're hurting. You know, it's it's better in the long run. I have 25 seconds remaining of this live because I've been on here for an hour. So I will blast, but I will save this live and you guys can go back and watch it if you want. Skip ahead, skip around. Thank you for watching and being with me and talking to you. Bye.